This video is property of MBKP International LLC. In this video, we're going to talk about the setup of our JSM 3060N. And I'll show you some of the accessories and a few things about it. We'll come over here and we'll show you the accessories that come with it. First is an air compressor, it comes with a little hose. You just plug it in there and you plug it the other end into the back of the laser engraver, and I'll show you what that's for later. Um, you'll get an exhaust fan here and an exhaust hose. This exhaust hose will connect to the laser engraver and it'll suck out all the smoke in the engraving area. The other end of this exhaust hose will connect here and you can use these clamps here if you want to, but it fits pretty snug on there. Okay, and then you can mount this somewhere if you want and then you can run the, another hose, just a standard size hose like to a dryer or something out of an exhaust vent or out a window or something depending on your setup situation. Okay, and I'll show you where this hose attaches to in the laser engraver later. This is the CD it comes with. It's basically going to have your software on it, some instructions, a manual, and a driver that you're going to have to hook to install on your computer. Okay, we'll come over here to the laser engraver. Before you turn this on, you need to do a couple things here. It's got a zip tie on it right here to keep this, this laser head from moving during chipping. So you want to you see it right there. You should be able to see it. And you just need to cut that and get that out of the way. And once you do that, you should be able to move this laser head. Okay. The second thing is to move the this sideways, this laser apparatus here. There's a little, you can feel it back here. You can feel a smooth metal bar back here that this rides on. And there's a little O-ring right up against the edge here of this thing. And you just take a little short flat screwdriver and you loosen that. And then you can then slide, just loosen it a few turns and then slide this O-ring all the way down to the end. And that way later on, if you have to ship this somewhere, you can slide that back and just tighten it back up for shipping. It's just a protection thing to keep it from getting damaged. But once you do that, you should be able to move this by hand. And easy. both ways. Make sure it moves freely both ways without anything grabbing it or pulling it before you turn it on. We'll go ahead and turn it on now. Here's with this thing here. Here's the light switch right here. What this is the system is starting here, system resetting if you see that. Take a couple minutes, about a 30 seconds or so for it to reset completely. What we're doing now is show you the light switch and it's basically just going to turn off the light inside here, just like so. Okay. And obviously this is emergency stop, it stopped the whole system. This switch here is for the air pump that I showed you earlier, one of the accessories, and I'll show you where that goes again later. <laughs> right now this thing's just resetting. It's, it's detecting the edge and, of the engraving area so it knows where it's at. It's about done here, it go, should go to the middle. Okay. Yeah, let's move it. Um, one thing I want to show you before we go any further is another accessory that I didn't show you. It's the water pump. You see down in here, there's a um, right here. There's a water flow sensor. It, when you first get this, these I've already um, to save time. I put these tubes down through here. But when you first get this, you're going to see these um, rubber tubes laying in here. You want to get them and feed them down to the in these two holes. The water flow sensor one will go just go straight down in this hole right here because this is the one that's going to connect to the. Um, water pump. So you just want to make sure you know which one this one is, the water flow sensor. The tube that comes out of it is going to connect to the top of the water pump. The other one's going to go straight down into the other one. You just want to make sure there's no kinks in these water tubes so the water's flowing freely. If the water's not got a good flow to it, this sensor's not going to let the laser engraver fire. So you just want to make sure there's no kinks, no water tubes all up in here to where it can hook onto the, this or anything. Just make sure they just run straight down into these holes. You'll feed them down in there once you once you get the laser engraver. Okay. Now we'll come around back here. Let me show you this first. This is where the exhaust fan hose would hook to. And basically um, what you're going to do, this is like this for shipping. What you're going to do is you're going to remove these four screws and this plate will come out and then you just flip it around, put it back in and put these four screws back in. And this lip here will be sticking out instead of in. And then you just connect your exhaust hose to it. So that's to suck all the smoke out of the engraving area when you're engraving stuff if you want to use that feature. Right here, I already got the water pump. You plug the water pump in here. I already got it plugged in. I'm going to go down here. And I already got the water pump in this. I'll just pull it out real quick so you can see the water pump. And right now, you should see the water flowing pretty good. That's a typical flow 
That's about what you want to see. Okay. This water here should be, it's ideal to use distilled water. You can use whatever water you want. Distilled water will help your laser tube last the longest. Keep it from getting corroded from hard water. Um, the temperature you want, you want cold water. You know, um, 50 degrees is good, 50, 60. But um, you can even go a little colder, 40. Um, you don't want to go too much colder than that though. But um, you don't want it to get any very warm. You know, you want to keep it at room temperature or lower. If it gets in the, in the low 80s, if it gets above 70, then like in the low 80s, that's not a good temperature. You could actually crack your tube. So keep it in the 70s or lower on the water temperature. On this, we do have water chillers or water coolers and it would avoid you having to have a water bucket because it doesn't come with this bucket. You're going to have to have your own bucket. It will come with a water pump though. Okay, And you just put the water and you drop the uh, water pump down in it. And here's the other two like I said, it's coming out that one. That's the water flow coming out. The other one came straight down and it went to the top of the water pump. And this thing will come with the water pump. You can just hook it to that. Okay, so this pumps it through there and it goes through the water flow sensor first and then it comes out. Then it goes through the laser tube and comes out here. And it's just going in a circle. But again, um, you want to keep this water clean. If you, if you don't want to mess with a bucket like this, we do flow, sell um, water chillers or water coolers to where it's a complete system. It just keeps the water cool and it just keep, keeps circulating the water. Okay, here's where the air compressor would go, the air pump one. And that's where you'd plug it in. Okay, and that's where the exhaust fan would be plugged into, okay? And um, right here, you want to check this, make sure there's no styrofoam in it. When this is shipped, it's in a wooden crate and in a box inside a wooden crate, and there's styrofoam planks around it. It's possible a little piece of styrofoam can get up in there. It doesn't happen often, but you just want to check it to make sure there's nothing there. And you can use a vacuum to suck it out if it was, or a toothpick to pick it out. But you plug that um, black hose that goes to that air compressor right into here. And then you control the air compressor with the, with the air pump switch up here. And all that does is it blows it, has, it blows smoke all the way to the, to the laser head where it would blow the smoke out of the way of what you're engraving on. It's another device you don't have to use, but some people like using it to keep the smoke out of the, out of the area where, it's, where whatever you're engraving on. Okay. One thing I need to show you, I want to show you here is the way this is plugged in. Um, this is your ground here, and I had this grounded here. And I just basically took a, let me unplug this machine, but I'll also unplug this here. This is your ground. I basically just took a, a screw and a bolt and put it on there and used the ground post there. Ground post only. Be very careful on that, don't put anything else. And that's just a ground if you're like in an office or something, it, could, it would work for you. But if you're in a if you're in like a workshop, you, you probably have a better ground than that to, to ground this machine to. But you do want to ground it before you do anything. Okay, and then you just plug it in there. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple things on this. Here's the engraving, the engraving area here with an electronics compartment. When you get this, this is here basically is your um, USB cable. And there's a hole down there. You can run the USB cable out and that would be going to your computer, USB port on your computer when you connect this to a computer. Okay, so now it's just to the side. Just uh, when you get it, before you turn it on, just make sure all, all these things are plugged in good all around these boards. Everything's plugged in nice and straight. Nothing's loose. You don't see any loose wires before you plug it in. Okay. I'll do a couple things here on this. Um, this here again. This is your light switch. I think I showed you, and that's the air pump switch. That would be when you connect that air compressor to the back, to the power on the back back there. That would be turning on the air compressor, and it'd blow smoke through this tube here. I'm just, I'm sorry. It'd blow air through this tube and it come out and it would just blow the smoke away from the area where you're engraving on if you want to use the air compressor. Show you a few things on this. Um, this is a LCD display here. I'll show you a few things on this. The power, max power is set to 20% right now. You can adjust that right here, max power, just click that and then go 10% or whatever you want to go to. I'll, I'll leave it at 20 and then you click enter when you're done. You can um, set the speed here, set to 500 right there. I think that's as high as it goes if I went to, oops, if I went to like say six or 700 and entered it. It's just gonna go back to 500. See, it's back to five. But I'll go down and I'll show you, I'll go down to like 400 and it'll stay at that. Enter it when you're done. And back to speed is at 400 now. Okay. 
let's see here for the table for the table you want to hit this um, Z button here Z U and then it's on the Z axis Z axis is the up down and they use these buttons here to these buttons here to um, control the table to go up and down and I'll show you that I'll, I'll push these buttons here you can see it raising up and you can just look over here on this button I guess and I'll just put that's what controls the table going up and down okay let me take it all the way up here and I'll do a laser test real quick now you're I'm going to use this cardboard as you can see there's no there's nothing burnt on it right now I'm just going to burn a little hole in it with this laser now the uh, when you're engraving the optimal height for engraving is about two and three eighths of an inch from the edge of this thing here edge of this long metal thing, flat metal here, right on the edge of that to what to the top of whatever you're engraving on. You want that to be about two and three eighths of an inch from there to there and that's just about average. Okay. I'm not sure if it's at that right now but um, I'm just going to do a quick burn hole in it. You want to close this lid anytime you're doing it. It's got a sensor right here and it, it knows from the sensor when this lid is closed. Okay, it will not fire if this lid is open, so make sure your lid is closed. And then we'll come here, and I'll press this. Let me exit out of here. Okay, it's set to 20% on the um, power. And we'll come over here. And you, you can kind of see it through there when it fires, but I'll just real quick look over here, and I'll put it on the, just this laser button here. I'm just going to push it. You can hold it for longer, but you just got to push it for about a tenth of a second. Right about this, you can see fire three, two, one, there. And that's when you first get it, you can just do that. And you can see it just burnt a little bitty hole there. And it, just real quick, it went, that's about the width of the beam there. You can see it on the other side, it went through it. I don't know how well you can see that in the video there. Yeah, oh. Again, all I do is when you turn this on and you got water flowing through it, cold water flowing through it, this lid is closed. Set the, set the max power to about 20% and you can just push that laser button real quick. Make sure the lid is closed again. And when you push that laser button, you just, just hold it for like a half a second, a quarter a second. It will, and that way you can test to make sure your laser is working before you go on any further. And that's just a quick test that, to show that your laser is working. Okay, these buttons here, you can move the laser head here with these. You can watch. simple and that, again you can adjust that speed of that like I'll go in here on, the, on this menu here and click on the speed and that was at 400 you can go down to 100 and it'll be a lot slower when you're messing with it if you want to enter and I'll do it again you can watch it as you can see it's a lot slower now But that's when you control the speed there. That's just some basic stuff on this thing. Again, the table, you'd hit the Z button, and then you'd use these buttons to go up and down on the table. You can remove this honeycomb insert here. Just grab, use some needle nose pliers and grab it where, where one of these bars run through, and you can pull it out and get about a little over an inch in height if you needed it for some, engraving something if you need some extra height. But um, other than that, this thing goes down pretty far there. Okay, this when you turn on your machine, here's your power indicator, pretty simply, that should come on, the green light. And when you're hitting the laser, like I'll close this laser lid again, when you hit this laser button here, that red light should come on. It's basically an indicator that's working. Now you're gonna get out of here, hold on. Okay, try it now. Then you can see it light up when you do it. But before you do this, just make sure your water um, is flowing good through the machine, and you do have the machine ground it with a ground wire and um, that's basically it on this thing There's, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple machine and we'll let me show you one other thing over here you're going to have access panels to the laser tube right here you can you can use right here and over here but what, and there's another access to one here 
And you can take these off and take that panel off and you'll be able to access the mirrors to adjust them if ever need to be. But they come pre-adjusted, they should be good right out of the box. And I'll show you the laser tube here when we got while we're back here. This will need to be closed too. You need to make sure that's closed right before you fire or anything. But they basically here's here's the water pump coming through and they'll go through the water flow sensor which is in there that comes out here and goes through the all the way through the tube, then back out that one and goes down and back into the water bucket. And your water should be flowing pretty much like that. It's pretty standard flow. You wanna if it's got just a trickle, you wanna check to make sure there's no kink in your water hose anywhere. Check all these water hoses to make sure there's no kink in it. Because if it's just coming out at a trickle, this is not going to fire. It needs to go, have a good flow for that water flow sensor to allow it to fire. So check all the water hoses back in the area where in the engraving area and up in here. Make sure there's no key, kinks in the water hose preventing it from flowing good. And one other thing about this machine, I forgot to mention. Basically, you can save files on this. You got your file menu here memory files. There's no files right now. This is empty right now, but it it holds like 120 MB of storage, I believe. But you can create on your when you get this connected to your computer and you uh, make say say you have something you do a whole bunch of every day. The same same exact um, you cut out the same exact thing all the time. But um you can um you can you can um um, create a file in, in, with the software and then save it to, to this and that way you don't have to have it connected to a computer in the future. You can just go in here get your file and click on start and it will engrave your, your item. You only need to have it connected to the computer after you create it on the computer. Then you can save it in here and you won't need your computer again for that file there. Whatever you whatever it is you create it. Okay, but that's basically it. This um, video is property of MBKP International LLC.